Okay, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera diucapkan kepada yang berusaha Dr. Kenneth Francis selaku timbalan pengarah Pusat e Pembelajaran yang berusaha Puan Jemon Suhana, Cik Nur Azliza. Terima kasih kerana sudi mengadakan roadshow kita pada hari ini untuk FPL dan Dr. Kenneth, probably you may start. Okay, boleh mula. Okay. So I just take off my mask first. I just cannot hear. Can hear clearly now? Yep. Uh, because I'm in the computer lab, so students are not here, so it's okay. So Salamat Tenggahari. I think afternoon already. Good afternoon. Uh, salam Sajatra and Salam Campus Rama. Thank you very much to uh, the Faculty of Sustainable Agriculture, Faculty Patania Lestari, for inviting the Center for E-Learning here to deliver a briefing and presentation. Now in Prior to the uh, the pandemic, we always come there twice a year. So as a of semester, we come to the, your uh, place and then we deliver this. And the purpose of the roadshow is actually uh, threefold. The first is to uh, train those who are not familiar with the system in some element of the system, because there are many elements which are not used, some of the facility of the system. The second one is to actually identify the problems which you are facing in your specific locality. So these may be specific to your respective location, which may not be common. For example, Lab One has its own problem. Uh, you may have your own problems related to connectivity. And the third one is to introduce you to some of the new strategies which you can adopt in order to complement your learning. These are the MOOC, micro-credential, and OER. Okay, So these are all part of the UMS strategic plan. And uh, you should be aware of it at the level of faculty. So generally, I think uh, Dr. Rakib may give you all a briefing on the OER. KPIs for the OER and MOC. So today we are joined with us here with, with, uh, with uh, Miss Nora, though many of you may be knowing her. She is in the charge of the technical aspects of the e-learning system. And she's also the administrator for the OER. And we also have with us uh, Puan Salmi. She is the expert in the, uh, the e-learning, the blended learning. And she has been uh, uh, the coordinator for the e-learning for many years. So. She has a lot of expertise and she you can learn a lot from her. OK, so we'll first start into the system by going into the system itself, because today uh, uh, DK Nora Jija has asked me specifically to focus on the learning management system itself. So we will look at the learning management system itself. So OK, so I'm going to stop sharing this screen and I will change to the next tab. OK. okay. So for some of you who are senior and you all are experts, this may be a repetition. So please forgive me. But I will go into some of the, uh, the content generation software as well as some of the different elements which are inside the system to give you an overview. Now, when we do a traditional blended learning system, right? what we call BL or blended learning, we are actually adopting 1732 and so on and so forth. But there are many other elements inside the system itself. One of them is the grade book. How many of you use the gradebook in the system? Because you can convert your, uh, your assessment plan into the gradebook. So you can assess all the formative assessment inside the system itself. How many of you use the uh, gradebook uh, feature inside the system? Can you just uh, give a show of hand? Or you can just click on the raise your hand tab. There's a tab there. For me, I've never used this. Uh, never use the gradebook feature. OK, so the gradebook feature will help you in the event that you want to create a Excel worksheet and download, for example, your assignment one, assignment two quiz, et cetera. You can actually access using the gradebook system itself. So that's one feature which uh, you will um, be able to learn today. The other one is the rubric. How many of you use rubric features? Rubric. You all, do you all create rubrics for your uh, courses and your assignments? The rubrics for scoring, grading? Yes, Rose. OK, Clement, yes. So everyone uses rubrics, right? OK, so we use rub uh, rubric feature. Actually, there's a software which we always uh, tell you about. It's called RubyStar, and it's used for creating rubrics. You can create rubrics for assignments, for lectures and so on and for responses in lecture for presentation and so on and so forth okay so let's go into the system itself because we only have uh, two hours and usually we will uh, blended learning usually takes about five days to set up but since most of you are using it and you are well versed with it so we can um, go through it regularly now the first thing which i want to ask you is what is the major issue you face with the system 
what is the major you can either type in the chat box or you can inform me by turning on your microphone what is the major issue the problem the most common problem which you have any specific problem because most of the faculties uh, they will raise the issue of using of quiz do you all have you all experience problems with lagging during quiz in the system itself the quiz button no uh, so you have not experienced that now this uh, is a problem based uh, this is probably because most of your students are accessing from campus so they are in touch with the server so there's no problem but if they are outside the campus then you'll have the problem with the quiz because this happens because the server is in the ums is running with one clock and their computer is running with under clock plus there's a connection in the middle so that creates a conflict and the quiz will actually run ahead it will hurry and then they are they don't cannot submit so that's one of the problem which they all face so let's go to the system itself the uh system i'm going to switch my tab huh? so if you cannot see or cannot hear you have to tell me because i can see only the tab which i'm projecting now okay so i'm going to switch the tab and what i want you to do now is to register in the system using the link i will resend the link huh? so you can because some of you who join now will not see the link i'm going to share the link again so please register on this link uh, which is here and this link is for you i'm after i finish this uh, session i'm going to uh, transfer it and make all of you teachers so you can access the link anytime and you can modify it okay now i'm going to register you as student not because i want uh, to make you as a student but because i want to show you how the system works when you are a student and what the lecturer sees and what the student actually sees so that's why i am requesting that you please register as student so you can register in the system and then we'll go through the various features in the system itself do any of you use uh, analytics in the system anyone is using analytics just raise your hand analytics feature analytics to check your students progress analytics you'll use analytics feature if you uh, are not using it if you are using it just raise your hand okay 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 two three okay two use analytics okay analytics is a very good feature uh, feature for tracking student progress and you can identify the students who are lagging uh, behind in the class how many of you all are using chat at in the system itself one salmi has been okay so chat anybody else uses chat because Pawan Salmi made a special request to JTMK to use the chat feature. OK. OK. The other one which I want to ask you, another feature is, are you all using uh, a Moodle mobile, Moodle mobile app? How many of you use Moodle mobile app? So you can, uh, so when usually when we are using WhatsApp, your personal WhatsApp is there, and then your, your students will WhatsApp in that personal, right? But you can actually separate it out by using Moodle mobile app. Do any of you use Moodle mobile app so that you don't have to, uh, you can separate your personal communication with the student communication? Anyone is using Moodle mobile app? I'll give you the link. I'm just Moodle mobile app. I, I will just share the link with you. I'm copying it now and I will give you the link. So you can find this app in the Play Store. Okay. So this is called a Moodle mobile app. You can find this in the Play Store. Now, there are two reasons why I suggest to use the app. Of course, the first one, obviously, is to keep ensure that you don't get disturbed after your sessions hour. The second reason is because after you uh, finish your interaction in Moodle Mobile, you can actually print this out and show it as a proof of interaction and blended learning. So that's why I suggest to everyone to use this app. You can install it in your phone in the iPhone or in the Android, and then you can use it for communication. Okay, So these are some of the things which uh, I advise or suggest that you do as a prerequisite to um, streamlining your system and in, uh, interaction with the students. Okay, Now, this is your dashboard, which you're all familiar with. The most important button, as they say in the blended learning 
tutorial is done the editing on okay now let's look at the people in this course okay so you can see that uh, who has registered for the course at this dashboard and this is actually your point of interaction with everyone in the course for example you can select uh, you can select everyone uh, okay so i just select please register so i need to have more uh, uh, registered users in the course or else i cannot demonstrate the analytics feature okay so Okay, now suppose I want to communicate with you. Okay, now that's the first instance. You as a student have been advised to register for the course you have registered. So I want to communicate with you. So what I do, I click, I select this and I generally send a message. Thank you for registering for the course. So this is what comes in. So thank you for registering for the course. Okay, so this is what I send to you and then I send message. Now, because the way our system is uh, built, I mean, the way the smart learning Moodle is built, we are, this is actually called Moodle. So this is the free, uh, what free online software, which is, uh, which is used at UMS and it's used by almost all universities in Malaysia. So the way the system is built, right, is it will send out a message, but unlike a WhatsApp message, you won't see it instantly in your chat box. You will see it uh, maybe after some time or when you log into the system. But if you have Moodle mobile, uh, Moodle mobile app in your phone, when I send a message to you, it will be queued and you will see it instantly as a notification. So that's what we do. Uh, that's the first thing. So when your students register, you can have uh, interaction directly in the system. OK, having said that about student registration, I want to know if um, how many of you face problems with the student registration. Any issues regarding student registration? Any issues? Student could not register. Or student registered and then, uh, like they hilang means disappear. Did you ever face that issue? No, no, not yet. Right? Some of the faculties do face the issue where the student will register and then they'll deregister and things like that. So generally, a student will not uh, register or deregister. So there are certain features. Uh, if you have a problem, there are certain features which you can address. So you can actually change the settings so that the student cannot re uh, deregister. But because you have not faced this problem, I won't uh, raise that process again. So you can actually block the users from registering. So inside the users tab, right, I just zoom on this section. Huh? Okay, so I'm zooming here. Okay, one second. I just move to the end of the screen and you can zoom out. Okay, I just move. Yes. Okay. Dr. Jalo has raised hand. Associate Prof. Dr. Jalo. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Kness. Thank you good for coming. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to ask, just now you mentioned about the Moodle app. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do the students also have to download and use this app? If we yes, want to yes, them? that's correct. That's correct. You, they will have to, yeah, that's, you need to tell them to also use the app because that will be your mode of communication in fact it's very good because sometimes you can um, uh, communicate with them when the network local area network is down okay so that's a good way to keep them and importantly you can use it for the uh, record of blended learning okay so that's okay i hope that answers okay thank you okay okay so now suppose you have an issue right with the students yeah uh, in the uh, enrollment methods you can actually have enrollment methods which are the manual and the self-enrollment methods but if you have few students it should not be a problem if the students exceed 100 then management is a problem and sometimes the students may not know which course to enroll for but in this one they actually have permissions so you can actually do a lot of manipulation of the system such as for example if an uh, it's actually under this section users and you have permissions okay you can check permissions for example if the student has um enrolled and you want to remove them so you can unenroll users from the course okay you can unenroll suspended users this is very rare, rare but it can be done and there are a lot of other things you can do including the preventing them from uh, uh, for example automatically unenrolling unenrolling from the course there are these are so these are additional permissions which are given to you i think the ones in red are given to administrator already some of you some of you may see it on your screen some may not okay so these are the various the things which you can do in the system itself okay let's go back to the course and the users itself this course people 
Okay, I usually go for two people. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, four users now. Okay, and that's it. So we'll just proceed with what we have. <laughs> okay, let me go back to the course itself. Okay, now the first thing which you'll be trying to do is obviously fulfill the 1732. That's for most lecturers. Now, in this system, you are given the option of teaching either by topic or by the date. So, if you want to teach by topic, uh, some lecturers prefer that. Some lecturers, in order to keep the students uh, in line or in track, they will not change the date feature. So, you can turn editing on and you will it will turn to red as you all know and then you can modify this for example i want to change this to topic one so i just edit this week here and then i just type topic one and then you click on enter okay. now when you do this you will have to teach consistently by topic itself every week or else the student will be confused as to what whether you're following topic and whether you're or whether you're following the um, weekly or, or temporal time schedule. So if you're teaching by topic, usually the topics are linked to your CLO. So you have to state that here. For example, topic one maps back to that CLO. It's good for you as a lecturer because later on it helps you with the table uh, 4.2. Now, when you are a lecturer, right, generally what we do, if we are teaching the same course repeatedly every semester, then we can actually back up and restore the course. Okay, So we have a backup and restore facility for the system. But when you back up and restore, okay. so here you have a system here. I will zoom again on this section. Okay, It may appear in your terminal at a different, maybe at the sideways on your screen resolution. But usually after your semester is completed, for example, you have finished 14 weeks and you're preparing for the exam week and then immediately you always back up the course you back it up either on your on the server or you can back up on your system itself on your desktop or laptop so when you back up it's saved in a file which is recognized by moodle so when you click on restore right you can restore the course back into the system again so this will enable you you don't have to keep redoing everything all over again so you have a backup and restore feature over here but when you back up and restore the thing is the students may we be uh, viewing all of your course in one go, which you may not want because they may jump to the next topic even before you have thought and then they, it will cause confusion. So what we do is we have a button here called edit and you click down, you can click on hide this week. So you can hide all the weeks which you don't want the student to see. Now, as a general uh, practice, when, the exam, when we do online exam, we generally hide. We recommend or we suggest that the lecturers hide everything so that the student cannot otherwise it becomes like open book test so they will of course they can find from other source but this is what we generally do with the uh, students whom when we want to hide content from the students so we just hide so as a good practice usually hide everything unless you want them to see it for that particular week okay so that's the feature so we put on show week now this is a general feature uh, general for the whole week however you can also hide the things which are within a week specifically without hiding the whole week. whole week. Okay, so that's what we see. Uh, so any other questions at this point? Any questions, any issues? No, right? So I'll proceed to the next one, which is what you need to do is the basic system setup. So what you have with the basic system is, I go back again to the link. So what we have with the basic uh, system is the first one which you add generally at the beginning of the session is the announcement. It's auto-added and you can add a activity or resource. So the first activity or resource which you add is the course synopsis. Okay, I just uh, drag here, add a course synopsis. Okay, and you give it the, the name, course synopsis. We call it table 4.2, but different places, uh, different IPTS, they will call it as something else. But uh, the general idea is course synopsis. So in the course synopsis, you copy and paste the, the um, introduction. Uh, introduction. So you can copy and paste the introduction. You can also have your uh, PLOs here and CLOs. Okay. So you can have these over here. It's optional. And then you click here, display description on the course page here. So they will it will turn up on the course page. Now this feature, right, which is here, display description on the course page, is given because sometimes 
the student may be accessing it using Android format or on tablet or uh, different format. So when you click on this one, it becomes uh, tablet or mobile friendly because they see everything in one page. If you don't click on this, it will appear as a link and they'll have to link out and link back. So they may lose track when they are click link, go out, come back, and then it's going to cause uh, confusion. So that's what. So now here, right? is a place where you add PDF file. I don't have any PDF file on my desktop here, but I'll just add a random file. Just click any file from my desktop. And I just see, mm, I just click something. Huh? So, uh, so I just click something. I just put an abstract, so it's easy for you to I just put, uh, just add a random file. It's just a random file. It's not a course file, OK? so. Just forgive me because that's all I have on my desktop now. So I just save it as a course synopsis. Okay, so the course synopsis and here, right? This is important for you. So there are many things given here on the types of uh, licenses. Always for this one is all rights reserved. This means, you know what? No one can uh, download your table and copy it again and use it in another university. Because actually you'll be surprised when the MQA auditors are coming to UMS, they will actually be from other universities. So they try to look through our course and try to find out what new courses they can create. So you have to be careful with that. So make it all right reserved so no one can copy and paste that same table 4.2 into their own system or else they can do it. So this always all right reserved and you upload this file. Now this is just a random file I have uploaded. So now what's happening is that uh, you have uh, different options here. But what you need to do is one important option. Now in the earlier days, uh, when we used to have the face to face, you know, we always had face to face uh, course with our students. Generally, the practice was in the first lecture, we would print out a hard copy. We photocopy the table uh, three, that time it was table three. We distribute it to all the students and we take a signature saying that they have received that uh, table three. Later on, they cannot say we were not informed about the course, right? But in this system, what you have to do is you have to do a forced download. I will show you how it's done. So, what you do is you set up all this thing but don't enable uh, this uh, other buttons because then they will have they can do other stuff with it so don't give them access to it but what you need to do is you need to click here okay activity completion so students must show activity as complete when conditions are met which means that the students have to click on the link and they have to down it will download and that means the conditions have been met that they have viewed the table 4.2 now for this one right what you need to do if you enable this for example if you have told them the first lecture will be on march february uh, for example if you are you are setting up the lecture for march second for instance okay your second march so you want them to download the table before they actually start your lecture session so that you know that they also know about your table. So you can set this date, but once you set this date, if they click after that, you will not be able to view or they will not be, you will not be able, they will not be able to download that. So you have to be careful with this. If you don't want it, you can disable it, click here. And for this one, you usually add a hashtag. So it will be course synopsis, okay? So I just call it course synopsis and enter and that's there. So you save and... Uh, display or save and return to the course so usually we save and display it's automatically displayed now the course synopsis is here okay so this is just a, a paper i just added up the students paper so so that's what they will see so on the statistics you will see who many who, how many people downloaded it okay so that's what so this is how you set up the first one which is the course synopsis okay now, uh, when you have a course synopsis, generally there'll be questions about that. So you can add a activity or resource and you can add a feedback form. Okay. So feedback, add, and this is general feedback, feedback regarding the course. Okay. So this is general feedback regarding the course where this is where you can post. So this is uh, where students can post their feedback regarding the course and you can make it this, uh, available on the course page. You can also set the date. Uh, for example, you only want to do this in the first week and you don't want to keep visiting. You can set this up. You can do the submission settings. Usually we set the 
user's name will be logged and shown with answer. And after submission, you can give them a message. Uh, you can say, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. Actually, all of this is just to make the students' experience more user-friendly. Okay, And this can link to another activity. This, for example, if after the feedback, you want them to watch a video or something, you can link it here by putting up the link. Now, common module settings, this one you don't change. This one also you don't change. And activity completion, you do not generally click this for feedback. This button for activity completion is only for those sections or those components of the smart tree which is compulsory or which is required mandatory because i will show you the feature later this will actually uh, track back the activity okay we'll see that and for this one we just put feedback uh, week one for example feedback week one and then it's hashtag so the system will automatically generate tag now suppose you are doing your at the end of your course you want to find out what feedbacks you just hashtag, you just look for this hashtag feedback week one and you will get the feedback. Okay, so I made a mistake. It's okay. So save and display. Okay, so that's it. So now you have your course. So now you have your course synopsis and the feedback where the students can make a comment on the feedback. Okay, so you have to give them a question, edit question. So I'll say uh, it'll be uh, just a short, uh, usually we set up, the, okay, I'll go back to that, so we are more clear on this. So now once you created your feedback, okay, so this is your feedback regarding the course, this is a opportunity for them to interact. So you have to create the question, so click here, okay, and then you give them a question, edit question, or there else they cannot see anything, edit question, and usually for this we have a longer text answer, and then the question will be what do you expect to learn from this course? Okay. So it's just an example. So it has a label. You have a, it will give a label and then you save question. Okay. There are templates, there are other things, but this is basically what you will see. Save question. Okay. And now we will go back to our course. Okay. Now, uh, those of you who are registered in the course in the system, you can just click on this and you can type anything. Okay, just type, try and type. So you will see this in your page. So can you see it, doctor? Yes, we can. Yeah. So yes. You, you just type something. I will show you how it actually looks like. Do you all use this feature? Do you use the feature? You can just type anything. Just type. Uh, just a random statement should be okay. Okay, I, I want because I want to show you how it looks in analytics. Okay, so I will go back to my analytics. Huh? That's it. Okay, so while waiting for you to type, I will show you the analytics features. So now, if, if in certain situations, right, we want to because we are not seeing the student face to face. Generally, when we are meeting them face to face, we know the attitude in the class, whether they are those who are sitting at the back in the front, how their behavior is, and how this linked to our how they are great. So we are afraid that maybe if they are not following on, you will not be able to identify who are the laggard and who is the leader. But with this system, you don't have to worry about that because there is something which is known here is the course analytics. Okay, I will just show you. Okay, one second. Okay. Now, uh, I don't know where you can see it in your system because I have expanded the screen. But in this particular course, right, which you have registered for, you will not be able to see this feature because you are registered as a student. I will convert you all to teachers, then you will see it. Okay. But for now, I will show you how you actually access this first. So you go to your reports. There's a report section here. So you click on the reports tab. In this one, right, you will see the analytics graphs. There's a feature here. This is just a graphic of what's happening in the class. So it's just a picture, but you can actually get all the data from this as well. But click on analytics graphs, okay? And you can see the number of active students, okay? Now let's see how many of us in this class are actually active. So I'm going to click on this number of active students. Okay, let it uh, generate and it shows you, okay? Can you see the screen now? Okay, you can, now you can mouse over on the screen. You can just, I will show you how it mouse over. Okay, now I can mouse over on the screen. I can see seven uh, students are shown up here and one student here. That means at two o'clock, now it is uh, three o'clock. So at two o'clock, there were seven active students. So you can see who are the active students at 
two o'clock. Okay, and you can see who's the active student at now. Okay, so what's what the system is doing, right? It's actually measuring the clicks. Every time you click on the mouse or click on a link, it is capturing the click. So if, for example, if you are teaching a class, like online class, and you're not sure if the students are active or not active, all you have to do is ask them to click on a specific link. For example, you click on your lecture note or click on a quiz, and then you will see this graph, it's real time, okay? This is one of the very good feature on uh, in the Smart 3, which you can access and use to understand the learning need of your student. For example, see, suppose you have a lecture, right? You have given a lecture in which students are continuously visiting that lecture note again and again and again. It means maybe they have not understood it. So the analytics enables you to understand what the students are actually finding difficult and what they are finding uh, challenging or maybe which is fine, easy. If it's downloaded only once, it's easy. So let's go back to our people. Okay, so all of you are here. So I can see who's registered again. Um, later, I convert you all to teachers so you all can uh, use up the feature, use the features in this particular. Uh, we have created this FPL Roadshow 2022. You can use it later to analyze the system and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, <laughs> okay. now suppose you want to engage your students in the chat session. Okay. So Puan Salmi has requested it specifically from the JTMK because we need to have a chat session. So you can add an activity or resource here, and there is a chat button here. Okay, chat add. Okay, so this chat room will be topic one chat room. Topic one. Okay. And just display it on the course page, and you can you if you don't want the student to Track activity, you just show activity and when conditions are met. This way you can track the student's activity inside. So the chat session, you can either have it at a specific time or you can have it at maybe you don't have a chat time. So next chat time is so and so. So you can publish the chat time when it is active. So generally, um, we change this to yes so students know what was discussed in the chat. So in generally what you do, you discuss this in the chat room saying that we, uh, here we discuss something, whatever you want to discuss, the topic, and then you can say, give them some rules, like every user plus one one chat, and please do not post any comment which is offensive, so on and so forth. S uh, things like that can be done in the chat window. Okay, so let's try this out. So we save, and so I'm going to start the chat time is at 1500 hours. Okay, uh, so I'm going to enable it and save display. Okay. Okay. Yes, so okay. Go to the question. Okay, can you all try it now? Can you click on the chat and we try it now? Okay, I turned editing off. Can you click and chat and hello? So you can see who's uh, the current user and you can click and enter the chat now here and then you can chat. Okay, I will share this tab instead. Hello. Can you see the tab? Okay, you can just type. We just type. Okay, I can see Associate Professor Dr. Jalo entered the chat. So you can just type something. Hello. So here, type something. Hello. So this is a place for you to interact. So this and so on. Okay, hi. So that's it. So this is how you use the chat. But this chat is actually a schedule chat. It means you have to schedule it in class. For example, you, have, you want to have discussion, you can schedule it in the class itself. Okay, so that's the uh, chat. So it's a chat window. So this is actually Puan Salmi suggested because uh, many lecture requests. And you can actually use it for, uh, for interaction. Okay, so thank you. So I'll shift to the chat, the next tab insert. So I'm going to shift to the normal tab. Okay, we are back on now. Tab. Okay, now you have attached your content, topic one, and then you have your feedback and so on and so forth. Now it comes down to the lecture week. Okay, so we do a week by week. For those of you who are new, we do we can do a week by week uh, system setup. Okay, so I have this one, and I add an activity or resource. Generally, what we add first is our lecture note. Okay, so we have our lecture note. So a lecture note, in terms of what is seen, is actually a file. 
So it's a file. You add a file. Again, I'm going to just add a file. So this will be your lecture note. Now, for the description, right? It's very important to give the introduction in the description so the student knows what they will actually see in that lecture note. So usually we say uh, introduction. We have the introduction to the lecture here. And in this one, generally we use the, uh, the CLO and the um, for this and then usually the objectives, the introduction and the CLO. So you can add your CLO upon completion of this module and so on and so forth uh, of this module. You should so the student knows what they expected to learn from that module or else the student will generally for lectures which are very uh, ex extended the student will not know what they expected to learn so you give them a focus point so that's why upon completion of the module you should demonstrate the ability to you check your for your cognitive uh, the psychomotor or the effective domain so you just put your cpas here okay so it's just a good way to Enable the student. And then you have your file. OK, now for lecturers who are creating content, I would always suggest that you upload a PDF file. Don't upload PowerPoint file because PowerPoint file can be downloaded and reused. If you don't mind, uh, if you don't mind other people downloading, students downloading and reusing, it's perfectly OK. But PDF is generally accepted format. The only problem with PDF is you may not have um, resolution because some of the uh, the the Chorak, all those uh, content which you put will move around. Yeah, so then you will have no no you will have problem over the for example figures and diagrams and patterns will move around so usually i just add the file i'll add the same file which is on my lecture note so just add this uh, so i just put this one uh, it's easier so just add just add one just add this file here and just a random this is a random file not an actual lecture i'm just adding for demo so usually for this one, you have to add uh, the specific. So if you don't want anyone to reuse it, you say all rights is a means you are the owner, Hak Milik, you are the owner of that. If you want public, if you want everyone to use it, you click public domain. Now, and there are different Creative Commons licenses, which I will tell you about when we discuss OER. Okay. So these are the different types. So usually for now, if you don't want anyone to copy it, you just keep all rights is up. But when you click all rights is up, make sure that it is actually your content and not somebody else's content. And then you upload this file. Okay. Now, in this one, in most lecture systems, you will have to have an appearance. In the appearance, generally, we have automatic embed first download. If you embed it, the lecture will be visible on the first page. Okay, So that's a embedded lecture. So you'll have embed and first download and so on and so forth. OK, so I'm just going to download actually something which I want to give you, which is your MOOC. Okay, so I'm going to download as uh, I'm going to download it and give it to you so that you can use it, reuse it later. Okay, so I'm going to download a PDF document for the MOOC and save it. My desktop in download. Just give me a few seconds. I just so you can use it later on. Because today we are not covering MOOC, but I want to share the documents. So I'll use this as opportunity to share. So I'm going to Download this file, choose file, and then cancel one second. Okay. Okay. So I have it more. Okay, so show type and it will be completion. Okay. And so more file. OK, so I'm, uh, I have put up a lecture. No, it is actually a MOOC lecture, which I wanted to deliver to you all, but maybe in the future. But I'll just share it with you so you have access to it. Now, this file right, is open to reuse. Uh, to uh, So I put a lecture note one. And you can click this one. You can reuse and remix and reshare whatever. It's it's uh, open uh, a public domain file. So you can just reuse it. OK, so that's the lecture note. And we have the lecture over here. Now, the next thing which you probably want to add for the lecture will be your chat. Or you can add the assignment as well. So you can either use chat or feedback. Generally, for most lectures, we'll have a feedback. It's a good idea to have a feedback for each lecture. OK, so feedback for lecture one. And OK, for example, and then in this, you put your description, your instructions for the students. And you have, so now 
assuming that you are giving a lecture and you want the student to respond because based on what we have observed our students will not respond in class because they are either shy or they are afraid or maybe they just don't want to respond so usually you can make it compulsory for them to give a feedback or you can give a mark for the feedback so you can make it available uh, for the particular lecture for example this day from for this lecture for example from uh, 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock you open it up and then you give a completion message thank you for your feedback okay and then you have a different setting over here and usually for this one we just push click as if it's compulsory wajib you say students show as activity as complete when conditions are met okay that's wajib and then you give it a date because you don't want to receive feedback again and again and again so you just enable the date for that particular lecture so you'll only enable it on that day so save and display as usual and then here of course you have to give a question for example the question will be a text answer and you may say uh, please please post one link to a video on smart farming for example i want to learn about smart farming okay so play a place post one link on a video to smart farming so they will have to post one link so <laughs> they will have access they will learn and you will learn as well so good question Okay, now here you have so now as i'm uh, as i'm conducting the training you can actually interact and click on the links and we will see uh, we will see what we see later on so that's the first one lecture note and the feedback for lecture one is there now when we go to oer i will show you how you can use the oer to actually import the lecture note inside so you don't have to keep on uploading the lecture note again and again and again it's it's time consuming and it uses up a lot of resources because your internet resources also will be used so you can actually just insert the link to the oer system so this is why i'm telling you uh, to use oer I'm encouraging to you to use oer because oer is a repository under ums whenever you store any content in the oer it actually is your intellectual property it actually belongs to you now if you display uh, put up your lecture here somebody else can download your lecture either the student they can reuse it without your permission but if you upload a link to oer they can download the link but we in the oer you will capture the statistics of who is using your lecture this it's very important for you because if you are starting your career as a lecturer that portfolio that teaching portfolio is important for a record to apply for the anugra or maybe even in the future for who knows in elnpt they may ask you to give a teaching portfolio now they are asking for teaching file you may have a teaching portfolio which will judge your performance for your kanaikan pankaj and so on and so forth so it's important to keep that portfolio in the oer and you keep it active by inserting the link i will show you how it's done when we do oer okay so when you want to add anything any other link right to your uh, uh, system for to your thing you actually click here on the link url okay so when we are for example we have a oer link you can click here url uh, url and then you get the link and put the link in the url button so this is a good way in which you manage resources and reduce upload download time okay now the next thing what we usually add for this is your lecture no, uh, your assignment okay so assignment will be under this one so assignment is here so generally you add your assignment here and then you can put up the assignment topic uh smart farming one so smart farming 101 so you can give them i just use what you know best so smart farming and then you give them your rules and your introduction and rubric introduction and rubric okay, so you give rubric here now suppose you are giving um your deal you are going to late submission you are going to deduct right uh deduction of 5% Five percent kurangkan, so makes marks less. So if you are going going to reduce the mark, you should state in this uh, statement. Or else later on the student will say, "Why did you deduct? You never stated before." So for any assignment, usually rubric is important and the late submission penalty for that. So you you add that, and then you can add your file here. If you're for example, you're giving a picture of uh, something to the student and asking to describe. you just drop drag and drop here this is very important for assignment because sometimes you may conduct a mid term using this 
uh, particular module for this assignment module. So in that case, you need to enable all these dates and the cutoff dates as well, as well as the time. So these are the various submission times. Now, the student is given a limit of 20 MB. Now you will ask me what happens when the student exceeds 20 MB? How do they upload the file? Okay, the way you do it is by accessing your Office 365 or the Google Drive account. So for example, if I want to give you an assignment here and my space is more than 20 MB, you use the other features such as the UMS student uh, Gmail or the Office 365 account. Okay, so that's what you do usually. And then you have all the other settings. Usually we don't change except for this one, activity completion. Again, students can mark the activity as complete when conditions are met. Okay, and I will just, I'm not going to, usually you have to set up all these, but uh, I won't set up everything because it takes time. And we'll save and display, okay, enter, save and display. Okay, now what I want you to do is those of you who, are, who have registered for this course, okay, so everyone has registered. I want you to go and click on this, okay? I want you to click on the smart farming assignment here. And I want you to upload a blank PDF page, just a blank. Just make a PDF page or you upload a file from your machine, but not a confidential file. You just upload any PDF file. I would suggest blank page. I want to show you something uh, which you can use to ease your processing of assignments, okay, which is the grade book and so on and so forth. Just submit. So once you submit, I will see here. So please, uh, those of you, eight uh, of the lecturers have enrolled for the course, please submit a blank PDF page. Okay, then I will show you how it works. Okay, so I'll give you around three minutes uh, or four minutes and you just upload, click, upload and that's it. And while waiting, I will show you something else. Okay, so I'll wait for it to upload. Okay, is it is everything okay? So upload. Okay, so far, Prof. Okay, okay so you just upload something. Because I want to show you how to access. Unless you upload, I cannot show you the next feature. Okay. Just for your, just to ask, are all of you all doing the classes already will be done face to face? Or are they doing face to face classes? Only Amali face to face. Um, hybrid. Hybrid. Okay. So we will see. Okay. So, so I'm going to go back to the show. I just want to show you how to assign the grade. Okay. So you will see that two of eight submitted and two ungraded. And once that Tariq is crossed, the date is crossed, right? It will change to red color. So it means that it's already delayed. This is a good reminder for you also because it allows you to monitor the system. Okay, I refresh. Oh, you can see three have submitted the assignment now. So I'll just show you how we work with those three in order to create the grade book. There's a grade book in the course, so we'll show you how to do it. Okay, now after they submit the assignment, and you have everyone in, you can see the who has submitted here. Okay, so you can see. Okay, so the the I can see here three submissions here already inside the system. Now, if you if you can do this uh, in two ways with regard to the assignment if your assignment is formative okay you can actually give the student uh, you you ask them to uh, download first you ask them to upload first time you provide comments and then they can upload it the second time as assignment too as a formative because you are doing a formative assessment they incorporate your comment and they incorporate and then they submit again so this is a good method to track that now when you do this kind of system right 
you have to you will have to ask the student to download and re-upload into assignment two. This one can also upload again. You can the student can correct it, but then it will create a lot of the confusion. So what I do is generally I will ask the student to complete the assignment, comment, and then upload to assignment two, and then I track the changes. Okay. So now, for example, here is the first one is Dr. Jalo. So I click here. Uh, sorry, Dr. Kenneth. Yeah, yeah. We cannot see your screen. Okay, 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 okay. I'm sharing a different tab. Okay, can see now. Yes. Okay. 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 There is a lag in the screen, so it's okay. So this is the. So the you you those of you who are well versed with this already know how to do it. So what we do is generally we click here on grading. So we just grade it. Okay. okay. Now when you grade it, it will generate a PDF. I'm sure everyone uses this feature. And in this one, you can create comments. So you can click here and post a comment here. So you can click post a comment here like a sticky note and you kindly annotate it okay so you can post a comment here kindly annotate this page and it's saved in the system you can also highlight text you can highlight you can do other things like adding a, a chop and so on and so forth okay you can also draw or scribble on the assignment so all these things can be done now once you finish everything right you can actually give the student a mark. For example, I give 95 mark here, and then I notify the student. Okay, now depending on your on your respective faculty uh, or the way in which you give the marks away, usually sometimes lecturers may not want to give the midterm or the assignment mark to the student online. They want the student to come to them, and then they will discuss the uh, the assignment and then give the mark sheet to them. Okay, so so it's kind of a procedure for making them appreciate their own assignment. So if you want to uh, notify the student directly, if you can't meet them face to face, you click here. If you don't want them to be notified, you click here. And then you give a grade and then you save. Now, if you see notify it and save changes, it will automatically inform. So uh, if uh, Dr. Jalo sees his terminal, he will see the uh, notification for his marks. Okay, now you click here, change user to the next submitted user. Okay, I can see here again. So again, I make uh, mark. And then I just click here. Okay, so I click here. Thank you for thank you for your submission. Okay. And then I click here and then I give a grade. For example, again, you give 95. You can also give feedback to the student here. For example, you can say, please refer to refer to this paper. Okay, you can and then you can give a link to the stranger who LCVR paper. You can click here. You can give them the link, and then you click, and then you notify the student. If you want to, for example, if you want to mark on this by hand, and you want to scan and upload, you can scan and upload here. Okay. But usually people don't do that because if you have hundred students or fifty students, every time you cannot scan and upload, scan and upload. So it's so it's better to mark directly on this and to comment on the system itself, and then you save changes. Okay. And then you move on to the next user. So this is a good way to uh, modify or to grant. So you can modify documents here. Okay, I just mark again. Okay, so I just mark something here, and again you give mark. I want. I'm doing this because I want to show you the grade book. Okay, so we go back to the uh, assignment itself. Now you can click here. And you can see who has submitted eight participants, six submitted, three need grading. Okay, so the time remaining is so and so forth. Now, if you want to download the grade book, right? You click here, view all submission. You can see the grade directly here. You can see the grade in the system itself. If you don't want to see all this, you can just delete this. So you only focus on the grade. If you want to download the documents, you can download it from this location. Okay, generally you can click all and download. You can click all if you want for your course file or to save it. You can click all and download all submissions as a as one set. Okay, now grading. Let's go to the grading. So now we go to the grade book. So if in this one, right, there is a system here for grades. So you click on grades, and now you will see the grade book. Okay, now you can see the students' grades here. Smart farming. Now suppose you get them to assignments. Each assignment had ten marks. Ten marks in your table four point two. You can actually give them. Uh, you can assign it here. And then you, when you want to download this one, all you do is you download the grade 
report here. So you have grade history, outcomes report, overview report, single view, and user report. Okay, you can see the user report who has submitted, and then you go back to the export file. You export it. You can export. Okay. Now in the export, you will you will see different options. You can usually export here. Some people want uh, open document CSV file, but if you are using the Excel, you can actually click here, Excel spreadsheet, and you download it here. So you download, and then you will get your file saved as a Excel worksheet. So this is a good system whereby you can you don't have to keep keying in the marks again and again. You can actually print it directly using the uh, using the system. You export, you download, and then you print it, and you uh, you can document it as well. Okay, so this I would suggest that you use this grade grade book feature to uh, basically make your life easier. Okay, so let's look at the um, the analytics now. Okay, let's look again who's active in the course. So I want to see who's active in the course now. So I go back to the go back to my main page. Okay. Usually you can only see that when you're in your main page. Okay, so I go back to reports and then I go to the analytics graphs again and I want to see who's active and what they have. So this there are many things over here. So I want to see who has been active in the class. So I click here again. So you can see eight active. That uh, corresponds to the active users in the class. So that's how you see the active users. Okay. Now I want to print it. You can print or download this as well. Okay. Now let, let me. I'll show you another feature which you can use in assignments. Okay. Now suppose you go to the same button here, reports, and then you go to the analytics graphs. You can actually see the assignment submissions here. Okay. Now, in this one, you get a snapshot of who has submitted and who has not submitted. Okay. In time submission, I click on this. Okay. See what you can do with this. You can see, thank you for submission. Thank you for submission submitting. Okay. So this is what I do. And then you send email. So now it will send an email to everyone who has submitted automatically. So you don't have to go and find who has submitted, who has not submitted. Okay. And suppose you want to submit. Let, let it it takes time so when you click uh, send right don't immediately close the screen wait for the Moodle mobile queue and then you click okay and then you come out don't don't exit otherwise it will not send now for this one for example if no submission to students I can click here and please submit your assignment okay. so this is just a way to uh, send an email and you can remind students rather than sending them repeated whatsapp and asking them to submit here you have a record of your submission. Okay, so that's it. So you can see what's happening in the system at any given time because this is updated in real time. Okay, so that's about the features which we actually, the basic features which we need, which are the forums, chat, and discussion. Now I will introduce you to the external. We have, uh, okay, so I will introduce you. Okay, now how many of you all communicate with students using external chat client? Do you all use external chat client? External chat client means other chat uh, options for communicating with student. Do you all use any external chat client means uh, like a chat client in the um, in, for example, in the uh, web page. you use? Hi, hi, Prof. James. Normally use WhatsApp group plan. Oh, okay. Normally use WhatsApp group. Okay, okay. Yeah. But WhatsApp group will catch out you when you're after office hours. So yeah, true. yeah, so that's the thing about so that's why I suggest to the, everyone to use the Moodle mobile app. Okay. Moodle mobile app you can document and then you want to you can actually have uh, more interaction with the student. Now what's happening right earlier for uh, when we want to create interactive environment in the in the classroom earlier, there were many kinds of interactive uh, free tools like there was a uh, there was the Kahoot and all that. Those are actually gone uh, now become paid and they are not only paid, they are very expensive to pay. But there are still some interactive chat tools which you can use, which students appreciate. And one of them is the Discord bot. OK, so I will show you the Discord bot. Uh, I'll just go off track. So this is something which you can add to your LMS, which is a Discord bot. OK, so I will how many of you all use Discord bot? Uh, how many of you, anyone using Discord bot, you can raise your hand for student interaction. 
No, right? You all don't use, right? No one uses Discord. Okay. This is what students actually, students feel very uh, encouraged to chat using the, when you use Discord bots because they are very easy to communicate with and students prefer to use them. Okay. So I will show you what is a Discord bot. So share this tab instead. Okay. So what you can do, right, is you can add a Discord account. You can you have to open a Discord. This is a free uh, chat software. It's like WhatsApp, but it's a Discord. You can share multiple things, and it keeps a record of what you are sharing via the links. Okay, now this is a Discord bot. So when you you can everyone can open an account. You link it to your ums.edu.my, and you can open it using your Google Mail. So if it's the website is discord.com. Okay, you can go and look for it later. I will show you how it works. And it's something which students will interact with more in the class. Okay, I'll just post it in the chat. Okay, so I'll open an account. Okay. This is actually not uh, needed, but this will allow you. So I can see people use WhatsApp, Telegram. So Discord is not actually needed. It's a feature which encourages students to come in. Actually, we are trying to make the student interact more. So usually what is observed in uh, blended learning or in teaching and learning environment, Discord is preferred mode of student. So this is a Discord bot. It's not very confusing. It's very easy to set up. So once you create an account in Discord, you will actually see a window here. OK, now the, the recording is being made. So it's basically an instruction later on. It will be shared to you so you can see. Now, suppose I want to create a room for us in this particular session. I can create it by using this. So we move to the extreme left side. And you will see this one's for different rooms. And I can click here and I can see this. It's called add a server. So let's create a chat room for us only, which will be open anytime. So I create a server. So add a server. OK, now I'm going to create a server for a school club. We call it a school club or a study group. So these are already a pre-made servers. So I create one called, uh, let's call it study group. OK, we call it study group. For a club or community, for me and my friends. OK, so I call it me and my friends. OK, and then I call it uh, today's server will be called FPL Roadshow Server. You can delete this server at any time. It's up to you. You can add a picture and so on and so forth. So I create. Okay. Now, this is an FPL Roadshow server. Now, in this server, you can add many things. One is you can add text, means it's a normal WhatsApp chat. You have a chat to chat. And then you can add voice channels. Okay. Now, the text channel is for text-based conversation, just as you know WhatsApp. But you can also add other things inside. For example, you want to share all your lecture notes with Discord, you can share it with the link. You want to share your, you want to conduct a lecture in Discord, you can do it as well. And you can also create breakout sessions for the students using the voice channels. Okay, so I will show you how it's done. So let's invite uh, our friends. Okay, so what I will need is I will give you a link. Okay, I'm going to copy a link to you and I'm going to share this to you in the chat window. And I will show you how to. Yeah, uh, Doc, uh, Prof. James has asked, need to download? No. If you have Google Chrome or any browser, Discord will run from browser. If you want to download it, you can down download Discord app in your phone, or you can download Discord desktop on your desktop. Okay, it's it's uh, You can use multiple options. So Discord is something which you can dedicate only to certain group. For example, you only want to create a group for crop, pro pro crop production. So you can create a group for crop production only and not have other things in that group. So it will be like a WhatsApp channel, but only for that group, like a WhatsApp group. But in this, it's a channel which is propagated continuously. Now, the advantage of Discord right, is, is this. Suppose there is in UPM one group, which is a crop production group, and you are in UMS. You can actually merge both the groups together. So you get a feed from the other group. So that actually enhances the networking and learning experience. That's why the Discord is used. It extends beyond the group. OK, now I'm going to give you a link. OK, and you can just click on the link. It should take you to the browser. And I will show you how the browser, how the Discord will function. There's a link there, discord.qq. You just click on the link, and I will. you can enter the browser. It may ask you to log in, but I have kept it open. Uh, I, I have left uh, conditions for enrollment uh, low, so everyone can log in. And OK, so somebody has logged in. OK, uh, there is somebody, MB, MBJ. OK, uh, MBJ, can you please type a message? Welcome. OK, OK, 
Okay, so I, I have welcome to the room. Can you add a message? So I can see all coming in. Uh, Dr. Amirul is there also. So, so you can you can just click on chat. Okay, so I can see you typing. Okay, there. So Amirul says hello, and so we usually in the Discord we use we don't use a formal term. We just chat like normal. So usually with student, I just chat using my name. So it's easier for them. Uh, Discord is uh, more like um, informal way of chatting. Okay, now. In this one, you can actually set up your rules and welcome and role notes and resources, etc., inside the system. So these you can add or you can delete. So if I want to add, for example, uh, information and then I add create channel, so I create a channel called lecture notes. Okay. So this will be saved in a text channel. So in this one, I can add my lecture notes channel here. So your students or your participant can see where to find lecture notes, and then you add your lecture note here. Now, okay, see. So everyone is coming in. You can just chat, no problem. Just uh, chat in the server. Okay. Uh, I will show you how it's used in context. Now, suppose you're creating a lecture and you have this chat, right? And I want to add, for example, a YouTube video. Okay. Let me add a YouTube video. Just give me one time. YouTube.com. I will add a. Uh, I look for smart farming. Okay. One minute. Smart farming. Okay. Now I want to share with like. I, I want to create a discussion on smart farming. For example, that's a topic which I know best. So I will share the video. Okay, so I just share. So all I do is I go to YouTube, I copy a link, and I come to Discord server here. Okay, and I share the link. So instantly, can you see what's happening? Okay, so instantly in the server, a tab. Uh, uh, Video is created on smart farming, which is from the YouTube. It's imported directly. A preview is seen, and your students can access. Now, this is very good when you're explaining to the student, and they suddenly say, "Oh, what is uh, what is the, for example, what are the different types of nitrogenous compounds used in fertilizer?" And then you have already gone in your lecture because your lecture is more advanced, but they don't know the basics. So, use Discord to actually communicate and add filler of knowledge. To the student itself, students will always prefer to use this. If you see the Discord browser, based on the history, chat they will not use, but this one they will use. Okay. So now in the Discord browser itself, you can conduct, for example, uh, you can create rooms here. So uh, so Amirul has joined study room one, so he's here in the study room one, so he's posting in the study room one. Okay. So this is the way in which you can create, uh, like you can create the conversation groups inside the server now if you want to find out um, who is more active and all there's something known as bots okay i'm going to share this tab with you so these are features that are being used uh, i just share with you okay now the the thing the, the discord has two things which are in the context of the um, interactive learning one is it allows you to create a group and link to another group so students can share information for example you have one crop uh, training group in for example fpl and another crop study group in another university for, for example where you studied earlier you can actually link these together and they can share the information and expertise together the other one about discord is the bot bot feature so you can create quiz in bot i will just show you a very simple bot it's called a me6 bot i'm going to add it to the um add to discord so i'm going to add it to the discord server okay so i'm going to add it so it actually asks login and it usually asks me to add and i will show you how it actually works can you all please post some kind of messages in discord just keep posting it's because i want to show you how the system actually works okay so add to discord okay so yes, yes server authorize one second i'm doing adding a bot okay so uh, select a server and today's FPL show set up. Keep asking me for username and login. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, you just you just it asks you for a login, right? Yeah. Okay. Just uh, log in and I, I'm just uh, you can just log in. Okay, so one second. I, I'm just setting up a bot for you so you know how it works. Okay. Okay, so I have added a bot to this server. Okay, so um, 
so actually you can if as you add messages or you will see a bot coming up now what this bot does it does a lot of work for you which you you won't you, you won't have to do for example you want to find who is the most active student in the class you can actually type a rank and then you can get your rank okay so i just put a slash and rank okay so now you can see okay so can you see this one it shows Kenneth and it shows a rank. One second, I project. Huh? One second, one second. I share it again. It has gone off. Okay. Uh, I I find the server. One second, one second. Okay, now I'm sharing the server. Okay, now you are communicating in the server, right? I can see you over here, some of you. So if you just put a random, okay, just put a random message. Any one of you can send a random message, and I will show you how active you are in the class. For example, you have 50 students. They are communicating with you in Discord, but you want to find out, they want to find out who is their most active. So you want to see. So you just click exclamation mark, and you type rank. Okay, this is a code. So that gives you a rank. Okay, so that shows you my rank is number one because obviously I've been communicating in the group. So this one is actually something which encourages the student to communicate more in the class. So effectively a good method to practice the blended learning. So this is just one of the different outs so the clients which you can use for encouraging uh, chat and interaction in the class. Okay, so it's simple and easy to use. Okay, any questions at this stage? Any question, doctor? Need time As to register, la, doc. For Discord? Yeah. Oh, just use your UMS mail. <laughs> yeah, they want uh, this uh, date of birth. Oh, okay. Create, uh, create the password, everything. Oh, okay, okay. Usually you, you usually use your you use your MS Gmail and then you, you keep your UMS Google account open and you can register with Google. It'll do it for you. Okay, I'm going to keep the bot open uh, while I discuss uh, the next element which was supposed to be discussed today, which is the OER system. Okay, so I'll discuss the o o OER the open educational resources in the system. OK, Doc, uh, Nurha Jija, can I move on to the OER? Or you need to ask any question about the SMART? You can ask me anything now. Um, from the floor, do we have any question? Uh, okay, any question is there? Wait, I see the chat one second. Please. Yes, Doctor, thank you so much. Yeah, for a nice presentation. So I have one problem I usually face during my quiz. Yeah, good, good, yeah. good. You asked me that question. Thank you. Yeah. When we conduct the quiz, so yeah. first time maybe two student, three student, uh, they haven't take part the quiz. Yeah, yeah. So I have to repeat for them. So when I am going to repeat, how I can do the identify who are restricted only for these three students, not oh. for all. Okay, Doctor Amir, for that one, right? We will have to. Yeah. Um, okay, I will show you how it's done. Um, if you go to, because I don't have quiz bank just now in the system, so I will show you uh, based on this one. Okay, I will show you uh, the setting. One second. Let me go back to my course module. Okay, now, for example, see, uh, suppose uh, you will face this problem uh, with Dr. Amirul. Uh, first, thank you for that raising up that issue. You will face this problem, especially when the student will access the quiz from offline. This is a common experience. Uh, so, sorry, from outside of UMS. If they are in the LAN in UMS, no problem. But if they are outside of UMS, you will face the problem. So in that case, what you can do, there's a restriction button here. So I don't have a quiz in the system just now. I'm going to show you using a normal... Uh, Okay, for example, this one, right? If I have this smart farming uh, course, okay, and then I have uh, this smart farming 101, which is an assignment, and I want to restrict certain people to from because I want to restrict the others from re attempting that. So you just go to edit and you go to edit settings for that particular quiz. Okay, now this one you don't have to see up, but below that you will see the restriction access setting. Dr. Amirul, can you see when you access your course, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. sure right, yeah. Button? Okay, yeah. so you can restrict access and you can add restriction. 
okay and you can add a restriction based on the okay suppose you have graded the quiz for the other student you can accept you can add a restriction for those who have uh, achieved a grade or you can click here so this one is user profile and you can restrict the students who have that particular user profile or who have other user profile okay if you want a specific um, instruction on the restriction for the quiz i can give that to you because i need to set up a quiz and i need to show you how it's done but the the basic thing is here okay so it's restrict uh, restrict access and you can add restriction based on any of these okay so activity completion you can add on date grade user profile or restriction set so this one usually we don't do but usually we select the user profile is that clear the user user profile is there in the matrix number or, or? you can set uh, who who is for example who's one second okay you have a restriction Suppose maybe here. i have to restrict by uh, a matrix number so. yeah 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 so it will be a big job because you have already uh, already given to the how many students do you have in class <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, sometimes 43, 45, something like something like that. But maybe out, out four of the student, point. five student, uh, they have been take part the quiz. Okay. So I have to repeat for them. Okay. To make it easier for you, right? Because you, I don't want you to <laughs> 45 student to add restriction is a lot. So what you can do, right? You can uh, after they finish the quiz, you can uh, do the grading. And those whose grading is less than, for example, the zero, for example, right? Yeah, for example, yeah. the grade is uh, zero. Zero means they didn't attempt the quiz. Those yeah. you can restrict. Okay, okay. okay. So but, but, zero, but, but zero sometimes also there's uh, maybe I have 20 oh, quiz, so okay, okay. sometimes they have uh, they started to attempt, but time right. finish, so oh, they okay, are okay, also okay. getting zero because unattempted. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that is because of the um, that is because of the time that one is uh, impossible or difficult to adjust. So usually you should but, ask but, them, to but usually the student they request. So, doctor, I have uh, maybe I have uh, the big mistake, so I want to repeat. So right. sometimes yeah. I need to repeat for them. Then, then you won't know whether they actually uh, sincerely repeating or whether they are just doing it because they want to improve their mark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's the issue. But unfortunately, that is the limitation of the system. So if they have attempted, in that case, it, I usually uh, conduct it. Uh, I mean, uh, offline. That means uh, I just uh, give them the hard copy. So they give the they, they give the circle on the right answer and they send back to me. Yeah, usually you can disable the timer. The the timing you can uh, disable in the quiz setting. You don't have to put a time. So then they can attempt it online, but the time will be uh, it will be given a more broad time. Usually that's what we do. But again, it does create a problem because the for example it will show the first pa the page with the question and then it moves on. Or you can set the question by page. So every every question of the quiz comes on a new page i usually give 20 questions in one place you save the time oh okay 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 usually you can if you give uh, one question per page it's easier for them of course they will use more bandwidth upload yeah, yeah yeah this is another problem because they yeah, complain yeah. from the student because they complain if every time on page on question yeah so yeah. they usually needs uh, i mean uh, the if the internet is solo then a big problem yeah that's the that's uh, that is actually cannot be resolved because that is Moodle has its limitation because it's a server-based program. It, unlike the Google quiz, which will run in your system, the Google quiz will actually, the, if you convert a form, Google form to quiz, that is the option which can be given for, for you, doctor. But that's, uh, I mean, that is outside of our system, right? It's not in yeah, the right. Moodle itself. But usually many of the lecturers are preferring to use the, uh, the quiz with the Google form, they convert to quiz. Once, Salmi, if you have anything to say, you can, uh, Puan Salmi is around because Puan Salmi usually has experience with the quiz. I usually use Google Form. Puan Salmi, anything you want to tell about the quiz? Any other solution to the problem? Think. Because to me, in Smart V, we can restrict the time. But when you use the Google Form, sometimes the student willingly doing late. Maybe yeah, yeah. Minutes, three minutes later they're submitting. So we have nothing to say. But if it's not be ten minutes is ten minutes. Yeah, but then the time the timers will sometimes uh, overrun. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, a, yeah. the issue. So you'll see that, for example, you reach the first the fifth question. Actually, on your clock it's only ten minutes. <laughs> but according to the system, it's actually already completed the time. So that's the problem with the system. But unfortunately, that's the limitation, Doctor Mirul. <clears throat> 
So the only way we can do is by restricting access to those who have already attempted by using maybe they are, use your name or the profile of the field. But this is additional work because you'll have to look for the field all the time. Uh, doctor, because this problem is uh, last time uh, for the Columns student last time. Mm. So when I give when I give them chance for the re attempt in the question, uh, the quiz. Yeah. So maybe some of the students they got uh, poor marks. They also requested. They want to repeat yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah. So this that, is that, another that, issue. That, that is actually beyond the control of this. Actually, you can find out from this uh, if you look at the logs, right? There's a actually look look at this. Okay, I'll give you another solution, Dr. Miral. One minute, I will show you what is. Okay, so if you go to the, you cannot see this now, but in your, because you because in this one, you enroll a student in your course, right, which are teaching the plums course, for instance, you can click on this, you go to reports, and you go to the analytics graphs, and you look for the, uh, uh, the content access. Can you see this one? Content access, or which distribution, you can click here. Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay, so you click on, for example, you have given quiz, right? For example, I have not given quiz, but I click on assignment and then I build graph. Okay, so wait for a while, it will build a graph for us. Uh, give it time because it's running in the server. So now in that one, you can see how many students have actually accessed the quiz and how many of them have not accessed the quiz. So you can actually figure out from in one go rather than looking through each and every uh, course, uh, sorry, the component file just give it some time it will do it it takes time is anyone else facing the same problem as dr Mir okay now see this one it shows you directly who has access and who has not access so this one can be used for example if the student has scored poorly you can actually show them this one you can show them the output of their graph so you can justify it by saying i cannot give you a re uh, re attempt because you already have accessed it and submitted already okay so those who have not submitted, you will see here as a turning up on a red uh, mark because they could not access. This one has access. Okay, Dr. Amiral? Yes, Dr. Yeah. Yeah, but I think when you have this problem, right, you should uh, send us a message. You tell us if you need assistance, you can help yeah, you. Actually, sometimes that. it's very funny because I'm still the message, Dr. I forgot. So forgot, to, <laughs> forgot to click on submit. To the quiz. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That, okay, the other solution is you use the you install Moodle Mobile, ask them all to install Moodle Mobile, and then you send a link to the quiz on Moodle Mobile. Okay, okay, doctor. Uh, thank Moodle you. Moodle Mobile, then they then they cannot say they forgot because the notification comes in the live in the live Moodle Mobile. Okay, okay, okay. okay thank so you. This is this is a sensitive issue because it's related to the time based uh, functioning of the system itself. Okay, any other question related to the system? Quiz is the most common one. Yes. Uh, Prof, yeah. I have a question. How to declutter previous uh, semester courses from our um, Smart B3? Uh, you want to archive it? Archive, or, uh, archive right? Uh, archive. Oh, okay. okay, so we go to this one. Okay, so one second. I just pull up again. Huh? I just change my window. Okay. So when you have, when you want to, okay, now suppose this is the course, right? And then I have decided to uh, remove it. I, do, I want to take it off. Usually by right, everything is stored in the server, but don't rely on that because sometimes when you back up and so it's, it may not be stored. So for your course file and then you to insert, you need to create a backup. So best solution when you, when you finish your exam, the last, the, when you completed your final exam, you click here, you go to backup, you click here on backup. Okay. And then it will ask you what you want to back up. Okay. So you have seen this one. It actually has uh, LMS. So this one, generally, we don't back up because unless you want to create for your course file, if you want to create for your course file, you have to include enrolled users because when you restore it back, right, it may restore it. Again, you have to disable this. Usually when you want to create course file in the first instance, you have enrolled users, uh, all these things, badges, etc., 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 And then you can, you have to go step by step. Okay. So next one will be here. And you want all these things. For example, if you don't want to, for example, you don't want the uh, chat, you can just disable this chat. Okay. User data, you don't want, you can disable. But for backup, generally backup everything. For restore, you can delete what you don't want. So better to have a backup file with all this. And then you go to the next step. And then you have all these things set up. And then all this as well. So it, this is a verification. And then you click here, perform backup. Okay. Now this will actually perform a backup. It will ask you whether you want to backup on the server. Or you can back up in your in your drive in your personal computer or your laptop 
or desktop. Okay, now you have this and you click on continue. Now this takes time and you can uh, you can rest you can get it here. So this will be your backup file. Now this is my backup file and I can download it here. So I can see one file is 145.3 MB and so on and so forth. You can download this and store it in your folder. So when you want to restore it, you have here a file. I think these are my areas, previous files. So you can see it here, you download. Once you have your um, restore, right? You can restore it using the other. So I'm not going to do it now because it will take time and the system will go slow. Okay, so once you have done this, you can actually click here on restore. Okay. In restore, you can import directly from here. So for example, if this is my file, I know the code and I can click here, restore. It will restore back. But usually when you restore, right? You don't try to restore the student data. You just restore your content. So you click here, restore. I won't restore now because I cannot restore when the course is actually running. It will create conflict with the system. So that's how you back up and restore the content in the system. It's clear. It's clear. Uh, OK, already? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So uh, this, uh -huh. sorry, sorry. This is a general practice. Every semester, please do it. Because after some time, the, it will become uh, dormant. The files will go in the archive. Yeah, uh, please, please, uh, please proceed. Ask me. Uh, okay, one more question, Doctor uh, Prof. Mm. Uh, about the first of my courses, uh, usually we have like uh, previous semester courses that clutters our my courses faces. Okay, my courses. Uh, this one, this one. Uh, how to hide the previous uh, courses? Okay, for this one, I'll have to ask admin. Uh, usually, it's stored there for your own convenience. Okay, so uh, on your dashboard, no, Nora, you can uh, answer that one because they are they have the con they have the backend control. So, uh, Nora, can you explain? How to uh, uh, this? Okay, it's simple actually. Can I answer on yeah, behalf? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Okay. I don't declutter. <laughs> yes, that is the problem that the, the, the lecturer always asks me how to declutter. So actually, what we should do is after we finish the session, we we hide the course, right? Yeah. So can can I share can I share the screen first? Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay. I just want to show this is actually it's simple. Um, I just stopped sharing, okay. Usually I don't declutter because I want to see what I thought for the record. <laughs> Others forget. Oh, never mind, never mind. Yeah, you just, you just thank you. Um, okay. Let's go here. A window and there's a lot of my son conference with ah sedang check i'm taking the club cancel a tap oh yeah i have to share the okay this one okay um this is the my my, my course Okay, this is my course for, the, and then when you go to um, my courses, there you will have like um, Mr. Yang who said just now. There's a lot of course here, right? So you have to hide the course actually. So like this, this is a last semester courses. You just click there. Okay, click there. Okay, this is the one that I have to so gonna check. So what we should do is, um, I have to do. Go to the administration, go to the course administration, click edit. So you will go to the edit course. Just change this one show to hide. Okay. And save. This is one H10403, right? So if you look at this by courses, there's no longer the courses shows here. So that's the way you declutter the my courses. So you can only only see the current uh, the current courses that you are teaching at the semester. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pan Salmi. Okay. Thank you. Usually I can see the admin terminal, so I cannot I'm afraid to declutter anything because 
I have the admin, right? So there are a lot of things seeing here. Yes, that's yeah, why I, I, use, I use my own um, courses. Terminal, okay. so, so it will be the same if other lecturers. Okay. So okay, I, okay. I, saw, I saw Dr. Muhammadu, Dr. Boy Jalo asking something. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. tell me, uh, uh, thank you. No, just to share um, regarding this, uh, uh, what hiding of courses. If we don't hide the course, actually, new students can register if we don't put a password to enroll. And yes, then yes. see all the materials there, you know, exam papers and everything. Yes, yes. Uh, so it, it should be a practice for, for lecturer after finish the LNPT or whatever. We close mm. the... Actually, when we close, the LNPT still can access it rather than we active, deactivate it. So it's better for us to hide the course for the 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 um the, the past uh, semester close okay um, thank you uh, okay Ohani, if we if we hide uh, the previous courses mm -hmm. uh, will student can access the previous courses no they cannot okay thank you sir. because if they search in the courses the course the the course will be dim uh, like this i, I show you uh. um where's the courses because this is one H043 that's no longer in my this here. So usually when we want to find the courses, we will um, search for the course code here. So H1043. This is the courses that I've been hide just now. So it will be dim like this. So actually for the student, they cannot find the courses. Okay, that's what we are afraid of that the current semester student uh, can uh, can access to the, our previous uh, exam and okay. uh, whatever. Yeah. I think the best thing is like Dr. Dr. Jaya said just now, we just you set the password for the course. So the, the new student would, couldn't access the past um, courses. Oh. That is the best way actually for them not to access usually my students also do that because they want to download all the notes all the materials but usually i will update my notes every year so it actually it's useless for them to download everything so it's better for us to just put password for the courses um how to put the password um you you have to go to the yeah the administration. yeah i think in the explanation right yeah yeah yeah. Maybe you can show Dr. Anna, Dr. Apa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dr. K. So you can actually uh, turn on your one minute. I just share the screen now. So one minute. Uh, Prof, Prof Salamat want to say something. Yeah, yeah, Prof Salamat. I just go. Yeah, please uh, maybe, ask. Maybe later on because I would like to ask a different question. Okay, Prof. Just go to one tab, huh? one second. Because now already everyone has registered for the course, right? I have a different window with me. I'm looking at the administration window. <laughs> okay. So usually for uh, for all the user settings, right? You click here on users. You click on the user setting. I think it will be small for you. And then you have um, one minute. I zoom so you can see. Okay. In the user settings, right? Okay. Click here. See. So I'll go back again. Huh? So you can zoom. So this is users. So this relates everything related to the registration for the course. For, for users, you have got enrollment methods. So you click on enrollment methods. Okay. Now in the enrollment methods, you can see the self enrollment method or the manual uh, en enrollment method. So self enrollment means what I did just. I just shared a link with you and you enrolled. Okay. Now you can uh, you can add a method which is for the self-enrollment one minute. Okay. Okay. Now, you, if you click on manual enrollment, right, you can actually add a, a one minute. I will check. So default roles. Because actually what has happened now is we have already enrolled, so I cannot change this now. Uh, there's a, a way to set up a password in this system, but I cannot do it now because the course is actually enrolled and you all have already enrolled in it into the system itself so i can't do it now because the course is actually running because it means that if uh, if i had done it earlier i will actually enable a password for the course but because you have already registered into the system it is actually blocking me off from doing the uh, registration using the uh, the password setting okay so i can't do that now once i mean i cannot do that 
I cannot override that function in my terminal. I, because the course is already running, right? So I cannot actually uh, do that at this stage. Okay, Dr. Yeah. Uh, I'm asking about the same uh, yes, explanation bro. just now. Yeah. Uh, there is one student yeah. registered to my course. Yeah. Uh, and I also teaching the same subject in Plumes. Yeah. So they appear, that, that student have appeared twice in Plum as well as in the Arus Perdana. But I, how do mm -hmm. I uh, get it, his name in the in the Arus Perdana? Uh, she, has she, uh, Professor, has she registered automatically or has she registered? Um, uh, have you registered her? Is it automatic registration? Automatic registration because when I open the and then it's already there. Oh, the, in that case, you'll have to, for example, see, uh, I'll just give you an example. In that case, what you'll have to do is, um, for example, see, I just show you with your case. Uh, you can actually unenroll the student from the from the course. The course which he's not supposed to be in, you can actually un unenroll them from that course. Okay, so if you see the user's list, <clears throat> the full okay. user list, you so, can actually unenroll the re respective user. Okay, so for example, see, I, but I don't want to do it now because it'll unenroll. For example, I select your name, and with selected users, you can um, you can do that. Unenroll. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so uh, many of the function I cannot do now because you all are all logged into the course. For example, the one about the password, I cannot generate the password now because the password is actually already enabled. But usually, you can unenroll the student directly from the course menu. Currently, I cannot do it, do that because of the course is running. Okay. Users, we have enrolled users. Okay, okay. So you can. So if you go to the users, right, and you have enrolled users, and you want to remove, I won't do it now. You can actually remove that by clicking on this link. Prop. See, for example, this is your name, right? I can actually uh, click on this cross and unenroll. So you can actually, you can either change it and you can suspend it, Prof, here. Okay. But this has to be done when, uh, for example, now everyone is logged on to the course, right? I cannot do it now. It won't function. So what I have to do for, when, when uh, for example, in the evening or in the night when nobody is uh, enrolled, logged into that system, you can directly uh, log into the system as a lecturer. And then you can directly click on, for example, I want to unroll. See, yeah, you click here on this icon here, okay, edit enrollment, and then you can click this to suspend. When you click on the suspend button, it will enable it, and then it will basically block that user from accessing that course. So that's the way you uh, basically stop them from an, uh, down, accessing your terminal. Okay, Prof? Okay, thank you. <laughs> but Prof, I have one confusion here. Yeah. So suppose uh, the student uh, this semester, mm. when they upgrading to the next semester, yeah, and they will enroll in new subject with new, I mean, uh, session and semester is totally different. So are they able to uh, enter the previous course? The actually the previous course based based on what uh, JTMK has told us, the previous course right, the previous course content the the. Uh, Alumni as well can ex uh, can access that content unless you hide it. They can oh, still access I see, I see. It, because yeah. that that was the feature given for the lifelong learning by uh, UMSO. The previous unless you hide off that course and take it off. In that case, the alumni can log in, but they cannot access it because it's hidden. But if you leave it as such, they will be able to access it. Okay. 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 okay thank you. Okay. So there are some things, actually certain things, uh, that's why when you do the course setup, the password you have to do before they commence the registration. So now what I've done, because we are all uh, lecturers, so I've just created a link. I've just copied the link and I share with you and you can enroll using the link. But if the students find your course and they want to enroll, usually you will have to do, do a password enabled um, system, which I cannot do now because you have already registered in, or I'll have to uh, create, uh, how do you say, I'll have to monitor it and, uh, Discuss, suspend students who are not from my class. That's the only uh, way I can uh, 
uh, do the housekeeping for the course. Usually, if you have 52 students and suddenly you found 54, then you can just go through the system and suspend those who have uh, enrolled without your consent. Usually, it's a rare problem, but I think it's faced because you all are teaching plumes courses, right? So you'll have the problem with external students. Yes, there's a question there. Uh, no, Doctor. Can I, actually, we have the the new students. Yeah. Let's say we are teaching a course in the fourth year. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, no, uh, you are teaching a third year course. And then yeah. students who are new will access the old courses that you have in the archive. Or it, since it's been shown to the students, they can access all the materials from the previous year. So, so, it, yeah, so to avoid this, as you say, the best practice is probably to put a password or yeah, to, or to yeah. hide the, the courses. Yeah. 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 You, you follow. We actually we don't have a best practice for that. Uh, but I think Pan Salmi has suggested the best way is to hide the courses because most of the times we are afraid to hide it because uh, we may miss out and then the ELNPT system and track. But According to what JTMK has told us, the PHP server is still keeping the record inside the system. So you don't have to worry about um, hiding the course and losing out on it. OK. So best way is password enabled login. Dr. Kenneth, maybe yeah. what we can do is it's not actually it's not the password, it's the, the enrollment key. Uh, maybe you can um, go to the users. Yeah. but. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm on an admin terminal one. I cannot. I, I think it. you can do it. You, you just try go to your users and then we can so uh, go to the um, enrollment method, self enrollment. Okay. Yeah. Just click. Just click on the. Yeah. Uh, this so, one. Okay. So okay. 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 But if Drums I do this, it, the uh, one, can, can the you do it? Key. One, and tell me, can you do it on the terminal? Because no, I'm you are showing, the... actually, you are, you are showing, already showing the screen display. Uh, but I am afraid I will disturb the. This is no, no, you, you wouldn't admin disturb. Terminal. Admin you wouldn't terminal. disturb. No, no worries. You, you don't have to do anything. But what we can do is because we don't want people just simply enroll. So go to the users, self improve enrollment yep. and then just key in the enrollment key there that so is I the password the enrollment key a b c d one two three four okay okay so that's what i this is generally what we do when the course starts at the beginning yes. of the course but if we do it in the middle of the course it may again create um, conflict. afterwards when there are new enrollment for this hmm. um they will ask for the enrollment key so this is how we we are we don't want the the, the different batch of students to to enter the course. So we, we provide the enrollment key. Yeah, but sometimes there's also they may share this with the other student. Yes, they may Just share with their friend. It. That's the that's the thing. But sometimes the problem is even the lecturer forgot about the enrollment key. Yeah. So, so we have we have but we have access to look for it lah. Mm -hmm. It's no worries. But did it, this is one way if we we want other student other batch of student go to um to go to the, the previous um courses mm. we just provide enrollment key there usually we will um we will uh, restrict actually uh, earlier when we had face to face we used to call them to class and ask them to enroll one by one and yes in the first class so we in that case we used to have uh, this one this button we used to enable mm. so once they enroll then we uh, basically stop all other enrollment but now it's online, so that's why we are facing this kind of like cross uh, cross, cross enrollment. Okay, so I won't save this one because I'm afraid it will disturb the system. Yeah, don't save it. This yeah, is yeah, I, just, just, just... I'm using the admin system, so I'm not logged in as my as my lecturer admin. So if I disturb it, everything else may get disturbed. Okay, so okay, so that uh, thank you, Pan Salmi. So any other question from the respected lecturers? Before I move into OER. <laughs> can move on to OER, Nora Jija? Uh, I think we can. OK. So we'll go into OER, and we'll I will explain the context of OER. I just log out from this terminal, OK? so. So you can you can access that at any given time, but I will log out from the terminal for for now. One second. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, now this is the OER terminal, and this will I will share the OER platform with you. So I will also share the. Okay, now let's start with those. I think uh, majority of the lecturers in FPL already have an OER account. For those of you who don't have the new lecturers, you will have to do something. And uh, Nora, are you around? Yes, doctor. Okay, so Nora is around. So Nora will help us. So what you have to do is you'll have to click here on the register button first. Okay. And then you, you send an email here. You, you use your UMS email and you register for the OER system first. Okay. That's what you need to do now. And then Nora will help you. Do all of you have an OER account? Everyone has OER who doesn't have? Uh, me, it doesn't have. Uh... Okay, so just register first and then uh, Nora will enable it instantly. Normally, if Nora is not around, you have to wait until she accesses the, e the email and then she will give you the permission. Okay, so while registering, we will go into the system itself and I will explain to you how the system has been set up. Okay. Now, the OER system is actually what is this OER system? Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Doctor yes, Mirul. I have already registered about uh, one month before. Yeah. But still, I am not allowed to uh, submit any document. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. When this thing happens, right? When you register for the first time, yeah. If you have any problem with the uh, upload of document, you contact uh, Nora, Miss Nora, because sometimes lecturers face the problem. It uh, depends on the faculty to faculty. Some lecturers have no problem. Some have. Okay, so in this case, uh, Dr. Amirul, please ask Nora. Nora, can you check? Uh, yeah, I already emailed, but no reply from them. Okay, so we will check in the system itself. Okay, so Nora can check for you now. Okay, already it. Already it. Yes, uh, submitter, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Amirul, can you check now? Uh, refresh, doctor. Yes, yes, now, now can, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then you can, you check whether you can access the different categories. Okay. Now with the OER system, what exactly is this OER system and why I'll explain the basis, what that OER system is. So you understand and then you can use it more effectively. Now this OER system is actually based on something known as, there's something, if you look at the bottom, there's something here known as D space. Okay. If you look at the bottom of the page, this is the D space. Now, what is this D space? D space is a search engine base. It's a repository which can be searched by a search engine. For example, you have Google. You can search your, uh, your, your content here using Google or search engine. This is because D space is designed to share the metadata with Google. Okay. So whatever you share here, can be searched on Google. The second thing is our policy for the this particular OER itself. If you see at the bottom, if you look at the bottom, there's a sister, there's a sign here. Okay, I will just scroll down so you can see the sign here. Okay, this is actually the licensing format for our OER system, which means that all the content here is Creative Commons, which means that you are recognized as the author. It is uh, attributed to you. It cannot be commercialized and it should be shared alike, which means that whatever content you put here, for example, you put 15 lecture, 15 uh, slides of lecture note, the user has to share it under the same license as it is. Okay, so you you are protected by this CC BY NC share alike license. So this is about the OER. Now, why is there a need for repository? This is because all universities have a repository. For example, our library has a repository for the thesis and so on and so forth. We have a repository for the other material, which is uh, non-index. So non-index, non-copyrighted material can be shared with OER. What can be shared with OER? You can share videos. You can share your lecture notes. You can share your, uh, for example, you write your final year projects. They can be shared here. What cannot be shared here is the thesis. You cannot share student thesis here. You cannot share any material which is copyrighted, and you cannot share any content which you have published elsewhere. For example, you have published your your paper in a journal like Elsevier, and they, there you have to pay for subscription, and then you upload your PDF here. Immediately, the Elsevier, Elsevier will contact you and say you have shared it on a repository. So these are things which you need to take into account when you share content online. Now, 
The next part is how is the content actually stored? Now in the system, the content is stored based on the faculty. Okay, these are actually simply said, they are simply folders which are stored in the, in the repository and they are searchable on a search engine such as Google or Bing or whichever search engine you use. So these are the faculties here. Now, if you look at your faculty, let's look at Faculty of Sustainable Agriculture. You can click here and then you can see the content here. Most of it is by uh, Dr. Akib. So you can see all his content over here. And there are different kinds of categories of content. You have e-article. E-article can be even a single page of text. You can store it as an e-article. You just save it as a PDF, upload it here, and it becomes an e-article. E then you have the e-books, e-notes. E-notes are all our lecture notes. You convert your lecture note into PDF file. I will demonstrate to you how it's done. And then you have educational videos. Now, the repository cannot store the video itself because the file size is very big. So what we do, we can uh, upload to YouTube, and we can insert the link in our uh, repository. Okay. Now, when you upload in the repository, let's look at uh, Dr. Akib's content itself. Okay, I'll show you. For example, click on this. The object is stored in the repository as a link. Okay, so that's a link here and a URL. So this URL is something which is can be searched by search engine, which means this is this URL is similar to a digital object identifier DOI for your respective file, and this is the link for the uh, respective. Uh, video so that's how it is stored in the system okay now what oer does and why ums emphasizes oer is that oer actually improves your visibility in the in the uh, academic space what we call the digital space okay let's look at how we actually upload content here and i'm going to upload a uh, content which we created just now so when you want to upload the first thing which you have to do is log in okay when you log in you use your UMS uh, email as a login, but please do not use the same password as your HR online and a single sign-on. Use a different password because this is governed by a different set of, in a different server. It's not connected to our SSO, single sign-on. Use use a alternative password. Then you sign in. Okay. Once you sign in, you can deposit content only under your faculty or your respective institute. I am opening the admin terminal so I can access all stuff. But preferably, when you log in, you log in only at the, your respective faculty of sustainable agriculture. Let's see how we do the procedure of uploading content in our system. Okay, let's. I'll guide you through the step by step, and there's also a video tutorial on how to do it. So I will show you how it's done. For example, if I'm going to upload material under Pusat e Pumbala Jaran, I click here. Okay. And then I want to upload this as a note. Okay. So I call it eNote. It's because it's a PDF file of a lecture note. So I click here eNote. Okay. And in this one, I can actually start my collection here. Okay. So what you do is this one, right, is not very, uh, like you won't see a lot of buttons and because this is a very simple HTML based page. So actually you click here and you click on submissions. You go to my account, you will see here and you will see the submissions here. So click on the submission button here. When you click on submission, you will see what you have submitted in the system itself. And this are mostly, it's not a, a lot of submission I create is for demo use. So it's only for demonstration. So I just, you will see a lot of stuff, but that's for demo itself. So what you need to do is click on start another submission. You need to click on this button right here. Okay. Now, when you ask, when you want to do a submission, it will ask you what kind of submission. What kind of submission to mine is uh, I go to Pusati Pembalajaran and I put a e note because I'm uploading a lecture note. So click on next. Okay. And then I'll just add my name. Okay. Uh, and okay, so I just add my name. So when you want to be uh, captured by the Google Scholar and so on and so forth, you add your name as it is in your citation. For example, you have, um, uh, I usually use Rodriguez KF. So I'll put Rodriguez first and Kenneth Francis second. So up to you based on it. If you don't do that, your Google Scholar will not capture it as such. Now, suppose you have a co-author, you, I will just put and add a, a co-author. So I add my co-author, which is the e-learning coordinator for the uh, OER. So so I will add uh, Edward, right? You Edward. So Eugenia Ida. So I'll just add. 
So, okay, so you, I add my quarter. Okay, now the title, for example, you can add. I'm just going to do it fast because it's a time. So I don't want to. So I have a title. I can have a date of issue, a publisher name. Usually we don't have publisher if it's a non-index publication, so on and so forth. You can add identify if you want. And then here I will add a lecture note. So this is actually a, uh, I can edit as, so you are given many categories here. You can even add music as MP3 file and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'll just add it as a learning object. Okay, learning object because a lecture, the language I select as English. This is because if you, for example, if you select another language, the search engine in Google will search by the language and then you save and next. Okay, again, I can add, so I added year to 2022. I just add today's date for just for the record, and today's date is 18, right? Yes, I just had to do. In this one, you can add keywords and phrases. I'll just add MOC, and you can add your abstract sponsors. Okay, if you're uploading, for instance, uh, Laparan Ahir for FRJS, you can also add your code here it will be uh, recorded in the repository okay and youtube link etc etc you can add this all i'm just not adding because i'm doing a demo and now i add the file so i just click choose file and then i add the file which i had downloaded just now download so lmook okay so this is a pdf file now this system will only ex it's better to upload only pdf files in the system so that they are accessible and usually cannot be edited very easily so you have file description you need to add this so lecture note book and you just add next okay so now when you have done everything right it will ask you to review it and to confirm so if you want to change at anything and at this time you can go to previous now please note that when you upload into the system right you if you have any copyright uh, pictures or something embedded in your content if a search engine searches through they will detect it so we try and avoid putting any kind of copyrighted material without permission so we have next and now it'll ask you for this license this is like a license which gives the uh, ums the permission to share your content on the so you click here, I grant the license, and you complete submission. Now, once the submission is completed, you will see it in the collection. Okay, so you can go to the submission page, and then you can see your e note for the MOOC which I uploaded just now. So I say MOOC FPL, okay, and it's there. Now you yourself can access it from the PEP website. So the what I shared with you, you can actually access here. So you click on the link, and you have your course. Now. Suppose I want to uh, suppose I want to create. I'm going to teach a course with 14 lectures. I can create 14 learning objects here in the OER. That's what I'm suggesting you you do it. And when you share the link, right? You just copy and paste the URL in your system. So you just copy and paste this URL in your Smart V3, and that will make it far far easier for you to back up and restore. It'll make it far easier for you to store the content as opposed to uploading every time a single PDF file. And also, this will re re remain on your record for the long term uh, record in UMS. So th this is why we ask you to upload content in the OER. It's basically streamlining your, uh, your content and your data storage. OK, so that's how we use. Now, if I go back to my OER page here, OK, and then I have, I have deposited now. Usually, I click here. So you can see it was earlier 97, now it's 98. So I click here and then I can find the notes here. So I go back, e notes, and then you have uh, the e notes here. So MOOC FPL is here. So you can find it all online. So this is a good way in which you can uh, avoid duplication of content as well, because you don't have to duplicate your content. So every year you can create the, uh, the library inside the system. Now, this, now that you have created in the system, right? How do you get recognition of that, or how do you enter it into your ELNPT and so on and so forth? I'll show you how you do it. What you need to do is the system over here is not linked to the UMS SSO. It's not linked to the single sign-on systems and the platform. So what you need to do is go to SMPPI. I will share a tab instead. Okay, okay. You go to your SMPPI, the place where we do all our research grant applications and so on and so forth. So you click on SMPPI. Okay. 
And once you're in SMPPI, you log in with your user ID and password. You log in here. And then you go into your publications uh, entry portal. So you have your publication and you go to the smart v, the v2 what they call the v2 system and then you have all this coming up and so on and so forth now what the system will ask you is to add publication okay so what i'm adding is a general publication because the e note it's not a uh, index publication so what it asks you to do is to search for profile so it wants to see that you don't have a duplicate so i just put fpl so there's no du duplicate and you click next to proceed and then you upload your your links here so you just as you do for all other publication, you have to select your thing. So it's general publication. And this allows you to upload any content. For example, this is a lecture note. Okay, It can be a MOOC course. It can be a policy paper portfolio and so on. So they have given a big range of things which you can upload because some, for example, from Seni, they may want to upload a poetry poem, a short story, a song, and so on. But you can add as a lecture note and so on and so forth. So once you're done with this entire procedure, you complete everything, you save section A, you upload all the content, acknowledge all the authors, and you display it here. I won't do that now because it's a lot of things to fill up. You click and you submit for verification. Now, many of the lecturers were asking, how do you, who verifies this? Okay, so Puan uh, Eugenia, our OER and MOOC coordinator, she found out that the person whom we contact is Mr. ID at the library. So for all the index publication, uh, officer from PPI will uh, check the DOI, the link, and they will verify. For this one, which is non-index, it will be uh, verified by the library. So Mr. ID at the library, Mr. Uh, ID Sufyan is the one who will uh, who will do the uh, verification of this okay so once you uh, up upload and you wait for some time if it do not, does not get verified you will have to contact mr id okay so that is how you use the system or how you uh, operationalize the oer system is it clear or you need me to cover anything specific or hajija anything you anything which is not clear um so far it's clear bro yeah so so you need to do this dual thing because otherwise you will not get it won't be captured by your uh by the ums system elnpt so you need to uh upload first there then you transfer the details here including the url actually the important thing is this one the for example see i'll show you this uh, link right you know this url right is the uh okay this is what i upload just now this link right is actually the url here HTTP OER.UMS, this handle link. This is actually like a DOI or digital object identifier. So this is the one which you need to copy here from here and transfer into the system where it asks you for the, the link to that. So you have the um, link. So you need to have that link here as well here. Article URL is here. You copy and paste here. And then you have your article URL and you upload your content here as well. So you have to do this double uh, upload in order to get the recognition in your ELNPT system or else it will not be recorded because the OER is not linked to the ELNPT. Okay, that's about the OER system. If you have any, I'll just log out from this. Otherwise, it will again may save. Okay, I'll have questions. So we'll take questions. Okay, yeah. Dr. Okay, okay, Prof. So usually uh, uh, I prepare the video demonstration for my courses yeah and when some is very bigger so i upload in uh, youtube then yeah. i share the link with the students yeah so the same link we can uh, use here right yeah but for that one there's a slightly different procedure what i'm going to do right because it's uh, it's a bit long i'm going to give you something one, one second i give you a link okay i have given i have for when you want to upload youtube video link inside it you need to do one step which is slightly different I will share the video with you. Okay, I'm going to share a video with you and because I prepared a tutorial on how to do it. Read things. Okay, I'm going to share a link with you. Okay, OER, upload UMS. Share link. Okay. I have to search through my video library. So. Yeah. 
So you can upload uh, almost everything. One minute, I just look for the link. I'm actually looking through my website. Uh, one second, and. Uh, I will give you a link to that, how to upload the material to OER. Uh, OK, I have to I have lots of videos, so I'm trying to find out. OK, so what you have to do, right, Dr. Amirul, is I will give you the link shortly, one minute. Actually, it was supposed to be in the website, so you can uh, do it very easily. OK. I will go through the process for you. So it may be uh, while I'm searching for the link, one second, I give you the process. Okay, so when you want to do a video, right? Okay, well, this is what you need to do. I will guide you through the step by step so you don't have a problem. So all you do is start another submission. Okay, and then you select a collection, which is, uh, for example, I set, select for PEP and I select for videos. Okay. And then I go to next because education video. You put in all this data. I just put A, B, C. So, okay, so it's, I don't have to fill up all this uh, time. Dr. Kunith, yeah? Uh, sorry, we cannot see the slide. Okay, okay, I will share one second again. Okay, so, okay, so that one ran away. So, one, the slide. one second. Okay, let's come back on. Okay, so what you need to do is go to your item submission. So the item submission will be under educational video. So you select educational video. Next, you need to key in this information, which is all the same. So I just add in random. Uh, I just add in something. And just select a number, 2002. Uh, OK, this one, this one you add. In this one, you have to select a video, or you can add a video. Okay. And then you go to next. Just add a title. Next. Okay. You have everything here. This one you add according to all your thing. Here is where you put up the link for the YouTube video. So you have to add the link to the YouTube video here. You need to copy and paste the link in this. So once everything is done, you move on to the next. Now, this is the one which is slightly different. Okay. Now, your link, right? To your video is not recognized by the system because the system is looking for a content but we cannot upload a video here so what you need to upload here right is a thumbnail i uh, from all the lecture i suggest that you take one picture image from the video and you convert to thumbnail file you upload here you click here and then you upload if you don't do that the system will not accept the video link okay you need to have that thumbnail that is the way the system is built and once you're done all you do is go on to next and you can upload your video Okay, Dr. Amirul? Yeah, okay, okay. I, I will share the video because I have uh, videos here, but I cannot uh, detect it because of the, uh, I mean, there are too many videos in my system. So I'm trying to find it out. Okay, you can ask any other questions while I search for the video. No, that's all from me. Maybe I'll okay. let you Thank you, Amir, Dr. Amirul. One second. I'm looking for the video. So there are too many. Any other questions? I just look for the video, actually. I just wait for questions from everyone. So, Nora, do you have the, the um, link to my video there with you? How to upload video to OER? Because I cannot access, uh, there are too many videos, I cannot track it here. One second. What, what video, Doctor? Uh, how to upload a video to OER? I cannot find it in my system because it's too many videos. Okay, wait. Yeah, I think it's shared with, uh, it's, it's supposed to be put into the system, into the main OER page, but it's not there actually. It's not on the main page. Okay, so that's how you do the OER. Okay, supposed to be here. Okay, here it is. It's actually here on the link. 
can find from the Our technologies allow the school to focus on what the IT systems deliver to learners and teachers physically in the classroom, in school, and also virtually. The school's so. IT resources are better used, knowing that the hard. Okay, so this is Hello, the video. Welcome to this here. tutorial on the usage of the OER repository. So, uh, Dr. Amirul can access this link and you can see website. it on the main page. Okay, so, to begin OER with, page. you can you access this link and you will find in the step by step the login window. Including how to so, I'm currently logged in using my so staff so ID, okay, so which is here. my UMS email ID and the associated password. Now, in order to uh, here, upload Narayesh, data, you, you need to select your faculty. You so, my faculty is the Biotechnology Research Institute. I will click on this icon here. And the link now opens me up to this. Okay, so you can reference this anytime. Any other questions are there? Okay, I can see some link here. Uh, Rajija, anything else you want to ask about OER? Is it clear about the system itself? Uh, from me, so far, no. I think everything is okay and understandable. Yeah, sorry, I cannot hear. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. My voice, my my audio. Because oh. of leg, leg, leg. Audio leg. I'm good so far, doctor. Yeah. yeah so if <laughs> any other questions are there, which I can take or you can ask me anytime. You can email me anytime or you can email Nora if you have any problem with the system itself. Because what uh, Dr. Amir will experience, right? Sometimes lecturers will ex experience it when they try to upload for the first time. Mm -hmm. 